Y'all look at the baby geese. They are so cute. Don't know if you can see them. everybody I wanted to show you my mother's container garden um, she has got four red barrels and we got them from the feed and seed store they sold them to us something that they get delivered comes in them and so anyway we got them and we drilled holes in the bottom of them and then she put really good organic soil in each one and planted her plants and she's got this uh, black plastic right here in them and that helps keep the moisture in helps with um, weeds and stuff like that so in this one she's got squash look how big it is already how long have these been planted Yeah, they're about three to four weeks old and look how good they're doing this organic soil that will really make or break your um, container gardens um, we use the organic miracle grow and it is just awesome but she's got um, squash in this one and she also has pepper plants um, this one was tomatoes <laughs> But unfortunately, we have a chipmunk and squirrel problem, but we're fixing to fix that with some nets this afternoon. So there's her little tomato plant that she used to have, but it's coming back. And this is a pepper plant. And then she's got tomatoes in this one. And she's actually got a tomato bloom already. So. They are looking good. And she's got more peppers in this one. And in this one, she has a different kind of squash. Um, there is a tomato plant in there and a pepper plant. So we ought to have some good stuff. And mom said that she puts like a tomato plant and pepper plants in her squash because the squash doesn't last as long when it gets really really hot it starts to die but the tomato plants and the pepper plants will last forever um, all you know all summer so that way there's always something growing stay up top the tomatoes planted very deep but these are surface plants so I take this cord it's cotton and it's like a wick so I'll take it and leave some about this much just laying down in the bottom and then I pull it up through the dirt and so it brings the moisture that's in the bottom of the pot to the top oh that's really interesting and I, for years I put all the holes in the very bottom of the pot mm -hmm. and now i put them up on the side a little on bit the side leave about a, a couple of inches down there uh -huh. and then the water that drains down will be picked up by this and brought to the top oh that is a really good idea because keeping a container garden moist 
Especially and, in the south. Yes, especially in the south because it gets so hot here. But keeping it moist is like one of the most important things. And you also got to watch and not let it get overly watered and soaked. So that is a really good way of creating the perfect water um, thingy. Right now, I have the black plastic, which is not very attractive, but I have some uh, beautiful pine mulch that I intend to put over the black plastic, which will also help to prevent it from drying out so much. And uh, there's all kind of little, little tricks of the trade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll and have... right now I'm getting ready to put black netting. <laughs> See, it's, it won't show that much. Yeah. Over my tomatoes that the chipmunks have not eaten, so hopefully they can't get them. I know. it. They're so pretty. I don't want them to We've go. We've always loved the little chipmunks, but we can only see one or two. Up here, we have... Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like, anyway. They're everywhere. And they'll come and run right up under your feet when you're yeah. sitting on the porch. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. All right, well, there's some good tips for y'all. Um, I, You know, if, if you love vegetables, or even if you've never tried this before, give it a try and uh, have some fun with it. It really is a fun hobby. Did you tell them how to plant the tomato? Now I want you to do that when I come back. Okay. I am walking over to Mimi's house now, and her and I are going to cook dinner together. So it's going to be a joint effort today. Um, all right, I'm going to let Mimi show y'all how to make her meatloaf. She makes the best meatloaf in the world, I will have to say. And she's going to give y'all the recipe and uh, tell, she's going to tell y'all how she does it. All right, go for it, Mimi. Okay, hey guys, I'm Mimi. I'm Anita's uh, sister from another mister. That's right. And a lot of times I'm around when she's filming, you might just see me walk through or something. <laughs> but today I'm going to show you about the best meatloaf ever. It's a recipe I've had for 30 years. A girlfriend gave it to me and it really is the best meatloaf ever. Anita and her mother are some of the best cooks I know and they told me it was the best meatloaf ever. It so, is really, it's true to its name, y'all. And I'm not a good cook, but I can make some meatloaf. So you're gonna start off with a pound and a half of ground chuck. Don't get ground beef, don't get organic, because it will be dry as a bone. Yeah. I mean, don't get like the good stuff. If you're gonna make a meatloaf, make it good and you're not eating healthy to eat a meatloaf. That's so true. Some, <laughs> you need some something meat. with a little that's, grease in that's it. That's right, you need a little <laughs> grease. You can uh, strain that grease off of it later, but you need it to cook. So you're gonna put that in your bowl. Then you're gonna add a half of a cup of oatmeal. You can do oatmeal or breadcrumbs, but I like oatmeal. I think it dissolves better into the meat and you hardly even know that it's there. Then you put two eggs in. I, see, even though I've made it 30 years, I still have to look at the recipe. <laughs> I know, me you too. You can tell I'm not a cook, but I have to keep <laughs> looking at the recipe. Then you do one cup of um, prepared spaghetti sauce. And see, that adds lots of herbs and that kind of stuff in it. What kind of spaghetti sauce do you use? Um, this is Bertoli Organic. Oh, I love the Bertoli. Yeah, so yeah. that's the Bertoli okay. Organic. So um, then you do one-fourth a cup of chopped onions. And I just do the, the dried minced onions. Really? Because they're going to go in here and they're going to get hydrated. And huh, there okay. you go. That's one other quick step. Half a teaspoon of salt. And, and I have already done this. I've mixed it all together. You know, you've got to use your hands in a meatloaf if you want it to be. See, it's all mixed yummy. up. Yes, you've got to use those hands. Now I've already sprayed the pan with um, some cooking spray. And we're gonna break this down into three different little uh, layers of meat. Uh -huh. And be careful about your layering or you're gonna run out of meat before you get to the top because you want to put two layers of cheese in this. Oh. Normally I use sliced mozzarella and it calls for about six ounces. I forgot to get mozzarella and Anita has been kind enough to give me some cheese to put in this. And any kind of cheese is gonna melt so it really doesn't matter. We've got 
some kind of cheddar and some kind of white that's going to get real creamy. Mm. Now I'm going to do another layer. I'll just kind of push it down and I, I have to keep looking at the bowl to be sure that I'm not using too much because I've got to put a layer of um, meat on the top there. So if you have to make the second layer a little skimpy, it doesn't matter. So you put all that together. And remember when you're doing this, that you need to pull your cheese out first because you don't want to put your contaminated hands back into your cheese. Uh, cheese Packet, package. yeah. Yes, back into your cheese package. You don't want to do that because it's got gooky hamburger meat all over it now. So, And I've just contaminated the rest of this so we don't have to eat it. <laughs> We might put a little bit on the top right before it's done Ooh, or something. Yes. Okay, so here's my last layer. And I know I've got to make this go. So I've got to spread it all around. If I'd known I was gonna do this for the camera, I probably would have been a little bit um, better about uh, breaking this out to be sure I had enough to go. But we're just gonna thinly spread it keep spreading a little bit more over here because all this cheese is going to cook together with the hamburger meat and well you know it's funny I put cheese in my meatloaf but I've never layered it like that and the cheese really just kind of disappears it you know does. you don't really taste it after your meatloaf gets done so and let me tell y'all this meatloaf is really really good um, I've had it many, many times, but I've never seen Mimi make it. And uh, so this is really neat. And, and this is probably why the cheese does taste because of the layering. Now I'm scraping now to get whatever I have <laughs> off the inside of the bowl. Okay, now my hands are all gross, so I'm not going to open this up. But I'm going to pour just a little bit more um, spaghetti sauce across the top of On the it. top. And since I have leftover cheese right before it's done, I might put a little more cheese on the top of it. You bake it at 350 and it takes about an hour and 15 minutes. It's not done in an hour. You'll think it's done, but it's not done in an hour. And um, it calls for uh, the one cup of spaghetti sauce and I would be sparing with that cup. Don't. I don't even use a whole cup. You don't use a whole cup. the more spaghetti sauce you get in there, when you slice it, sometimes you think it's not done because you see the redness that it's creamy uh. and you don't want to overcook it. So that's all there is to it. So we'll show it to you in about an hour and 15 minutes. All right. Can't wait. Here it is, guys. Make me a plate, lady. All right. So you do have <clears> and we have mashed potatoes, peas, good bread. Mmm. Doesn't that look good? Yummy. So we had a great dinner, as you can see. And I just wanted to reiterate a few things. Um, Mimi usually uses um, mozzarella cheese slices. So make sure you do that because it did make a little bit of a difference in the recipe, having the grated cheese in there. Um, and the mozzarella one definitely does make it better. Now, it was still delicious, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying follow the directions of the recipe that she gave you. And um, I promise you, you'll have a really good meatloaf. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button.